What's going on, folks? Ted from Nerd Immersion here, and I'm back with my good friend Noah, and we are here to kind of clear the air, as many of you have had questions. You've seen a bunch of <clears throat> excuse me, stuff going around, and you're probably wondering, what's going on? Why did I see videos? Why were videos taken down? Why were some blurred? And some of the information is a little legal easy. So I need somebody who's going to be able to help me interpret that. And uh, that's why my good buddy Noah is here to do that again. So welcome again. Noah. I wish we could meet under better circumstances. I know it's, you know, it's, it's always fun to, you know, we did get one video in where mm. we weren't like, you know, <laughs> under the gun or <laughs> like discussing yeah. current events. You know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. And uh, I really do appreciate your turn of phrase there of like clear the air because like we've come on and talked together or rather I've come on to your show and talked with sure. you about um uh about controversies and issues and bad action and stuff like that. And I really want to just kind of lead with saying I don't know that we have that here. I think Correct. we have some miscommunications. And so I really do like the idea of like clearing the air, so to speak. Um now we're going to get into some fun esoteric legal stuff. Mm -hmm. Um so I do need to do a disclaimer at the top of this episode for it. which is Hello, everybody. My name is Noah Downs, a.k.a. My Lawyer Friend. In some lives, I am the GM of the Forgotten Paths podcast, which you can find on any you know, podcast app anywhere. But today, I'm talking to you as a lawyer. And uh, I need to say that I'm giving this information for you know informational purposes only. It's not legal advice. It does not constitute the creation of an attorney-client relationship. Um, your circumstances will almost always be different. You should consult your own attorney, unless I am literally your attorney, in which case, shoot me an email. Uh, if you have any questions about this, go do some research. Go find some stuff. We're just here to talk today. Um, so don't – basically, the TLDR is uh, don't take this legal information and uh, try it at home. Go to a friend's house. Uh, so for those of you, I'll give you sort of a, a history to before we get into where Noah's going to come in here. So essentially, obviously, as you know, the 2024 Players Handbook and the new updated core rules are in the process of releasing, right? The Players Handbook is now in the wild. 2,800 copies or so were sold at Gen Con. Several people received early copies. Now, this is nothing, receiving an early physical book is nothing new. Several of us in the creator program have received early copies, but in the past, it came one of two ways. One was through Watsi's PR firm, and it would show up around 14 days prior to official street release. And this was how it was handled for many years. About a year and a half ago, the D&D creator team took over the process of shipping these books out. That led to those books, while arriving for free, usually not arriving until some point after the physical books were released to the general public or early access on D&D Beyond. This was an exciting new uh, early access program in which uh, books would be sent out significantly in advance, uh, usually arriving for most people right around the Friday before Gen Con or in that start week, this just this past week, uh, to coincide with people getting physical books at Gen Con. Uh, or in the cases of a watermarked PDF sometime in June, right? And we received, uh, I believe from talking to various folks who received just the physical book, they just got the book. They got basically had the conversation, right? Do you want the physical book? Yes or no. Mm -hmm. And that was what, that was how that transaction went. Mm -hmm. Correct me if I'm wrong. No, that's exactly how that went. It is. It was an email that says, um, Hey, you know, do you want this book? If so, you know, there's there's uh, not a ton of restrictions. We just ask that, you know, you respect an embargo date, that kind of stuff. Right. And the embargo date, which we'll talk about in a second, did shift a handful of times throughout that time period. But the most recent one that most people had was 9 a.m. August 1st, which is also the time period where those books would go on sale at Gen Con. So right. the first day of Gen Con, the first day of Gen Con, 9 a.m. in the morning. Now, we had those of us who had received the um, the PDF version were basically said, you know, we'll get you one of these. And it kind of fell into the same restrictions to some degree, saying, uh, you know, you can't post anything until um, there was a non disclosure agreement. And it said, you can talk about the fact that you signed it. You can talk about the fact that you're in the program. 
but you can't obviously show anything until the embargo date passes, which is what the same folks in the physical book received. And it gave us a little bit of stipulations and said, uh, you know, basically there are some pages that are under permanent embargo. They can never be shown. And they basically listed a section of page numbers and kind of towards the middle end of the book. And then the very end of the book, they said, these are permanent embargo. They can never be shown under any circumstances. However, they can be spoken about. That was the direction received, which I think, again, that and the folks who received the physical book, not speaking for everybody, but I could speak for myself in this instance, assumed that that meant everything else on the table. Uh, now, you may have seen a variety of things going back and forth, and I can't speak for what people heard from individual representation. If they'd heard from the creator account, I could tell you what I saw, which was, hey, we're so sorry. We'd like to have further discussions about what happened, uh, about content that's already been released. Our goal is to preserve your content in whatever way possible. Can you hop on a call real quick and talk it out? And that was, again, with folks from the creator team who were nothing, and I want to make this very clear to folks out there, nothing if not willing and ready to try and accommodate in any way possible. Yeah, the, the members of the creator team, just speaking to that point, the members of the creator team, I think, are uh, had, had nothing and have nothing but the best intentions and are some of the best people that I've seen working in a fairly stressful job. Um, so kudos to them for trying to navigate um, some orders from on high, so to speak. Yeah, so we had back and forth. Basically, they didn't want us to do work that was unnecessary, and they came back with probably what you may have seen or heard from other folks about uh, a breakdown saying, hey, you need to blur X amount of page content. Uh, you can't physical or digital. And the sort of impetus of that was that someone could recreate the product with and i'm i'm summarizing here so i'm not reading verbatim i'm just kind of giving you a, a a general my understanding Noah's is going to step in if he feels like i'm saying anything out of turn here absolutely uh, but uh is basically so that folks couldn't recreate the physical book by screenshots or flip throughs or whatever the case may be for example if if you can go through and do a flip through and we'll get into this shortly but you know, basically, you can do in 4K flip through so that people could literally screenshot, post it, and put it behind some sort of uh, password protected link. Correct. And then do whatever it is those people would do with that. Yeah. Uh, and it did seem, uh, my, again, my interpretation of this was it did seem to be a little bit of a moving target. At first, I was told, go blur your content, preserve it. We don't want to lose it. We want you to not have to do all that work again use that YouTube editor feature to blur things. Then, before I was even able to make that decision, I was told, you know what, don't do anything. We don't want you to do a bunch of work if you don't have to. We'll get back to you with updated clarification. <laughs> Which was great, because I was like, okay, rest of my day is free. I'm not running back to my hotel to do a bunch of blurring. We're good. And I also made that abundantly clear to the creator team that I was on the floor at Gen Con getting back to make these blurs. That's not a thing I could do on mobile. I'll do it when I'm able to. And they were like, that's all we ask. I think I actually ran into you when you were trying to figure out how to do it on mobile. <laughs> yeah. As you were mid, mid thing. We were at the, where the hunters uh, campfire lounge. And, yes. uh, and you were just so like, how do I? Uh... <laughs> yeah. So uh, then they basically said, hold off. And then we got our updated clarification, which was basically what I'm sure you've heard a lot of people talking about blur, uh, blur and or block. 50% of a given singular page or 75% if it was a two-page spread, right? Not something in that a way people couldn't piece together the entire book, which is something we're going to see as a theme as we go through here. Uh, and that was kind of where it stood, but the creator team did nothing if not encourage you to follow up and anytime you had a question, clarifying or otherwise, hey, reach out, we want to get back to you. And I had sent them a series of questions asking about what this directly applies to. Can we even have the conversation that we're having now? And uh, they were like, great questions. We'll get back to you. Then it was the end of Gen Con. Then it was leaving. And we got a email with a final clarification that came through yesterday afternoon slash evening and basically said, disregard all previous uh, 
recommendations, stipulations that you received regarding the embargo. Disregard those. These are now the new final embargo rules. And why don't I have you take us through those new updated rules, unless there's anything else you want to touch yeah. on before that. Um, no, I, th- I think that that's a, a great way to put it. So so the what what was received, um, when, when it was yesterday? Today? I yesterday. Um, yesterday. Uh, as of August 7th, 2024, the following guidance replaces any previous communications, which is super huge because it does say, hey, forget everything else. This is the way it's going to happen going forward. And it's we're providing these updated guidelines informed by your feedback for content covering the 2024 Player's Handbook. One, do not publish footage, images, or uh, typo, distribute files that display an entire chapter of the book end to end. Do not publish footage, footage, images, or distribute files that display the entire book page by page from beginning to end across your content. Do not upload or distribute PDF content of any product provided to you. Do use the book as a visual asset for your content for reference, illustration, or discussion in accordance with fair use. And then there was a link to the Copyright Alliance's fair use FAQs, which while useful for a high schooler writing like an article on fair use for Mm -hmm. their teacher, are a little bit lacking in terms of the nuance of what is, quite frankly, one of the most complex aspects of copyright law um hence this video i think correct right right (laughs) yeah and and honestly aside from clearing the air for everybody to kind of know what's going on this is also a teach ted fair use so ted can make his content and and know what he needs to do or how he needs to go about it yeah and so um i i will say that having strict guidelines like that are good it's helpful um it is a step in the right direction here um, not publishing footage images or distributing files that display an entire chapter of the book in the end or the entire book page by page or distributing the PDF makes sense. That is the through line that we've had so far. Or this Correct. gets confusing is when they start referring to fair use. Mm. And I think the uh, fair use was made a reference to because, and this is me guessing at this point, I think reference was made to fair use because uh, the idea is that they're saying, hey, if you were going to be offering commentary or critique of the work, then stick to your typical con- commentary or critique guidelines. Right. Which is a fair use consideration. So okay. let me kind of summarize real quick. What is copyright law? Okay. Um, and then everyone just ended the video right there. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> um, copyright law, uh, uh, copyright attaches, copyright is, is a property, right? Mm-hmm. It, it, it's a soft property, right? It attaches to a, an object or a concept or something like there when something uh, is fixed in a tangible medium of expression. So say, for example, I draw smiley face. Doo, 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 sure. um, and... It's my smiley face. That is creative expression that I fixed in a tangible medium. I need to mm-hmm. sharpie it or something. Sure. I have a copyrightable interest. Now, do I have a copyright? Mm, no, I have copyrightable rights. I have to register a copyright with the U.S. Copyright Office in order to have that. Mm-hmm. But that is the basis of copyright. With copyright comes a number of rights that you have. The right to distribute, the right to uh, govern derivatives, the right to license, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the relevant rights that we have here are the right to display. Right. So when it comes to the content that you make, Ted, and the content that a lot of people make about copyrightable assets, such as books, art, et cetera, film, television, um, sure. the you are inherently, by displaying that work, kind of infringing on copyright. Sure. Um, because you're displaying a copyrighted uh, asset without permission to display that copyrighted asset. Now... It is what a lot of uh, YouTubers, such as yourself, and content creators around this rely on is the doctrine of fair use. The problem is that fair use is an affirmative defense, and people over-rely on it. What I love to say to people is that fair use is bullshit. Sorry if I just got you demonetized. No, Uh, you're good. Let's lay it out. (laughs) Why is it Um, bullshit? So fair use is an affirmative defense. Um. It is an affirmative defense to it, and I've got my notes on this side because, you know, this is complex. 
Sure. So it's a form of defense to a claim of copyright infringement. Basically, the idea is that you have to get sued in order to, use to properly claim fair use. Now, you can analyze things through a fair use lens, which is what the, the D&D Creators Department is asking us to do. Mm -hmm. um, but in order to properly claim fair use, you have to be sued. And then fair use... Um, if you claim that defense saying, hey, yes, I was infringing co on your copyright, but it was a fair usage of your, okay. of your work, um, you have the burden of proving that it was um, uh, it was actually fair use. Now, it didn't used to be codified. Fair use to use used to fair use used to mm -hmm. be a doctrine that was kind of found in case law. OK, um, it's now actually part of the Copyright Act. Um, section okay. 107 of the Copyright Act, which is cool. Um, and uh, fair use is typically uh, granted in cases where someone is um, uh, using a work for the purposes of criticism, comment, news reporting, um, uh, teaching, nonprofit work, sure. um, uh, basically saying all that wouldn't be constituting an infringement of the copyright. Okay. So break that down very simply. What it's saying is, hey, yeah, I'm using a work without permission. I don't have the right to use it officially. I don't have an express piece of paper that says, yeah, I can, can use, use this. It. Gotcha. But the reason I'm using it makes it okay that I don't have that permission. Um, it, it is under the, the doctrines that allow us to express ourselves and allow the free flow of ideas and creativity and comment, commentary and criticism. Um, there's elements of free press involved in fair use there's sure. element of free speech involved in fair use etc cetera, etc cetera. so um there's four factors to consider in fair use uh, one is the purpose and character of the use and this is the one that we're going to talk the most about today okay um that includes whether the use is commercial or is for nonprofit or educational purposes Two is the nature of the copyrighted work. Three is the amount and substantiality of the portion used in relation to the work as a whole, okay. which is also critical for this. And then finally, the last one is the effect of the use upon the potential market. Okay, um, interesting. And I will tell you, for those of you following in home as we go through this, I am going to tell you at the end of this whether, whether or not some of these uses we talked about I think would fall under fair use. So you will get an answer one way or another. Okay. Um, so when it comes to the purpose and character of use and Ted, feel free to cut me off with questions as we go. Sure. Um, uh, just say, Hey, lawyer guy. Yeah. Um, the, this is the most important one because we're looking at whether or not this, the use of, which in this case is critiquing, reviewing, commenting, and talking about the new player's handbook from wizards of the coast D and D property. Correct is a socially beneficial activity that constitutes criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, or research. Um, the question really is whether this use is commercial or non-commercial. As in you're making uh, money what, on it or? Yes. Okay. And whether it's transformative. Um, okay. Non-commercial use is almost always going to be more f fair use uh, as opposed to commercial use. So if it comes down to commercial versus non-commercial when you're doing some analysis, and to be clear, this is going to be found in, uh, differently depending on what court you're in. Sure. Um, Non-commercial use usually is going to be more leaning towards fair use than commercial use. If you are, what that means is like if you were doing a flip through of the book for a monetized YouTube channel sure. or content, that's a commercial use. Okay. A hundred percent. Right. Um, you, are, you are showing something for the purpose of making money. Sure. Now, um, what if you didn't have your channel monetized or didn't monetize the video? That would help. Um, okay. If you were, if you were not, if you de purposely demonetized the video, mm. then that actually goes more towards non-commercial use. If you're just a non-monetized channel, sure. Then I actually think it flips more towards commercial use because you're trying to get clicks and views so you can get monetized. Okay, makes sense. Yeah. Um. So. You're looking at nonprofit educational uses versus commercial uses that right. in that case. A flip through of the PHB is not a nonprofit educational use. Correct. You're gonna have people in the comments of this video saying it's an educational use. It's not. Okay. 
That's um, so. What, give me like a quick example of an educational use. Like, what would that be? Uh, educational use would be like if I am in a classroom setting, mm -hmm. a literal classroom setting, and I'm a teacher, and something from the PHB, um, a page of it is illustrative of something that I'm trying to show in class. Say it's a, and uh, I'm trying to teach archetypes to my my literary um, okay. analysis. Sure. And I see the archetype of the wizard as like part of the hero's journey, something like that. Okay. Um, then I can say, oh, shoot, that's a great thing. Let me just do a quick photocopy of this to hand out to my class. Gotcha. Um, okay. Uh, as opposed to, hey, let's look through the entire PHB or let's look through this entire class. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, that That is an educational purpose. Okay. Now, when we're looking at other educational purposes, sometimes you can say, hey, I'm trying to educate you about D&D. That actually would potentially fall into the educational purposes here, but it's not a nonprofit educational purpose. So I don't know that um, you would say it's necessarily distinct from commercial use. In that so this is like if I were to say like how to play D&D &D 5e 2024 part one, and I'm teaching you the differences and how to play the game, mm -hmm. but I monetize the channel, it kind of looks like it bleeds between multiple options there, right? It could be educational, but it also is yeah. commercial. Now, we do have case law specifically kind of clarifying that a little bit. Uh, that basically says that use made, um, try to remember it specifically, use made at or by a nonprofit educational institution or something like that, um, or on a, a channel, for example, may actually still be commercial if okay. it's sold or ad supported. They specifically I, said ad got supported. It. Okay. Um, and so, uh, or profit making. So the, what the purpose and character of the use that we have right here is almost a hundred out of a hundred times going to be commercial. Fair. So the question becomes, is it transformative? Is it criticism or comment? That kind of stuff. Um, How does one, do, I'm sure this is not an easy definition. <laughs> uh, the Supreme court is actually, you know, uh, for all their faults, uh, given us a, uh, a, a note on transformative and again, okay notes um something is transformative if it adds something new with a further purpose or different character altering the first with new expression meaning or message so basically um uh it doesn't need to convey a different meaning or message but it would basically have to be something new so criticism commentary of the php could potentially fall in this necessary use of of the php um, so you can use quotations from works. Um, you can, uh, you, but what you're essentially looking at is, is it for a different purpose than the original work? Okay. So what if I were to say, pull up the older version of an unearthed arcana, let's say, and then say, let's see how much changed from the final version to the old version, the last one we had. That is a great question. I actually think that as long as you, and we get in the other factors there, I'd say that doing that kind of comparison, um, especially if you're saying, I like this one better for this reason versus this for this reason, that more gets into transformative use than just showing the new PHB. Gotcha. Does that make sense? It does. It does. Because right. that's kind of where I was leaning before we got this updated um, embargo clarification. This was yeah. how I was thinking I was going to do my content is put up the old unearthed arcana the most recent version on the screen for you to look at and then mm -hmm. reference the book and tell you this is what's different because i'm not showcasing anything but i'm telling you what's different and it right. seems that me talking about it is okay right exactly so so what we're looking for here and for the 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 purpose and character of the work is are you offering something that is uh, more discussion in mm. nature is it criticism is it commentary or is it just Hey, let's flip through the thing. Sure. Um, and as 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 unobtrusive and as simple and unoffensive as a hey, let's flip through the thing might be to the average person. This you don't doesn't mean that you have bad intent. Correct. It's just, you know, it's it's not fair use. You know what I mean? Right, sure, sure. So and I wonder if this was different. Well, I don't know. Maybe you can answer this too. Does it differ if it's a live stream versus a recorded video? especially if it's a live stream that doesn't have a VOD access to it? Um, I would say that it doesn't matter at all. Okay. Um, uh, if, if it's a live stream, um, now people are going to 
quibble with me about whether or not you know if it's a live stream that's not vod recorded sure is it um fixed in a tangible medium of expression and i say yes um because it was fixed on in ram even if it was temporary access random access memory um, interesting so technically it was at some point somebody could have grabbed it from your stream etc gotcha so, okay um, All right. it is more it is more than ethereal okay gotcha so there you go that answers that yeah um now go ahead sorry no no keep going i was gonna say the second um factor that we're talking about is the nature of the copyrighted work um here we're looking more at like published versus unpublished works okay here technically the php was not released but it is published because it was you know sold etc it is um, in the public eye technically ex exactly and so i'd say that if an and under this doctrine of, of fair use, the second prong, um, the nature of the work, um, unpublished works are given more protection than published ones. Okay, sure. So in that's, that case, that specific case, then um, this being a published work, it might not necessarily get as much protection under fair use uh, from infringement, that is to say. Um, also, however, the nature of the copyrighted work, things that are more factual in nature – as opposed to highly creative works, yeah. go to the nature of the copyrighted work. You can't say that a Dungeons and Dragons player's handbook is not highly creative. I would, <laughs> yes, I, I would agree with that. In <laughs> fact, I would say that in theory, which is not obviously legally truthful, but I would say the entirety of the player's handbook is nothing if not transformative, as you are only using that as a tool to tell a different story. It is a medium of getting information to then go off and do something different with it. However, yeah. the nature of what's on the page is the issue here, correct? Right. That's correct. So the first factor is super important. Second factor is rarely the important one. Um, okay. So the nature of the copyrighted work is almost a, a nothing burger. Um, okay. That's why we're not going to talk about it much because it doesn't really matter. Sure. Um, unfortunately, that's the one that leans the most in favor of, hey, yeah, you can you can use the work under fair gotcha. use. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> so um, the third one is the amount and substantiality of the portion used in relation to the copyrighted work as a whole. Now, this is something that I'd heard something from the creator team, and they didn't have an answer for me at the time, mm -hmm. which was something regarding this, regarding copyright for literature, and they right. said it was something for like it was like a page count or like you said, like if the whole thing we know it's 384 pages. Am I given 10 percent of that that I can show without issue? Do I need to track that or how do we determine what is a portion of substantive whatever you said? So. That's bullshit. OK. <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> let me tell you why. Um. If you let's use the notes of a song or the pages, et cetera, there's this common misconception, for example, that if you only use 10 seconds of a song, yes, I hear this all the time, then it's fine. That's not true. Okay. Just not true. Especially so like, like if you could, a, could a singular an alert on Twitch or something, could a singular note even? Yes. Okay. If yes. it's that distinct, Half a okay. Note. Like, all right. Um, so, yeah, when yeah. you have your Metal Gear Solid alert sound as your phone notification on a Twitch stream, in theory, Nintendo yeah. could be like, hey, you don't, or not Nintendo, uh, Konami could be like, hey, you don't own that. And they have before. I'm Trust sure they me, have. Yeah, I've received them. Um, <laughs> so that, that, is, that is bullshit. Now, what courts do look at, where that's based out of, is courts typically ask, what is the percentage of the work that is used? Okay. Compared to the whole. Okay. And also, was the part used quali qualitatively substantive? Oh, so boy. basically, Great. yeah, let me let me dial that down. Is yeah. the part that you used the most important part? Well, so that's to subjective. go back to the, to go back to the music example, did you use the guitar solo from you know you know all, all along the watchtower? Sure. Or did you just use like a couple of notes that happened to fall down the same same side of scale? Sure. Um. Now, uh, that goes both towards how much and the whether or not it was the substantive substantive part. Now, if it's an iconic piece, it's more likely to not be fair use. Okay, so in a in a the entire book, entire chapter, yeah, then it's more likely to not be fair use. So if I have this book and I want to talk about the wizard, 
let's say, right? I've sure. got a base class. I've got four subclasses. Seems like now the entire chapter of chapter two covers all the classes, right? Yeah. So if I'm not showing every single page end to end, I'm not violating that aspect of our updated embargo clarification. But if I show the entirety of the wizard, is that too much of the whole or is that still kind of nebulous to figure out? Maybe. Okay, got it. So it's it's really <laughs> unfortunately to your point about fair use, like you're not this is not a this is not a proactive thing. This is a reactive. I got sued. Now I'm trying to defend myself by saying what I said was not the whole parts the parts of a whole or whatever. So I've actually got a specific case for you to kind of illustrate this. Sure. Uh the case and I'm have it up on this screen. Let me go to it real quick. The case is Harper and Row Publishers Incorporated versus Nation Enters, which is a 1985 case. Okay. Um, basically, um, uh, there was a magazine called The Nation magazine, and it sure. published excerpts of Gerald Ford's book length memoir. Um, there were 300 to 400 words of verbatim quotes, but it wasn't yeah. like the full book. It was 300, 400 words of the full book. Um, However, the Supreme Court at the time held that the third factor, the amount of substantiality, actually weighed against fair use. Oh. Because the excerpts talked about Ford's discussion of his pardon of Nixon. Oh. That the okay. court found was at the heart of the work. I see. I see. So if you could make the argument that the wizard was the best and most important class in right. all of the 2024 PHB, one could make the argument or, you know, let's uh, listen. Take a break here, folks. Take take a breather. If I were to talk about the Ranger and talk about how I don't like the changes to the Ranger and how it's the only thing I didn't particularly like from that book and illustrate that, one could presumably say that because I have downplayed that so much, you wouldn't need to purchase the book because of that or something. You know, you see what I'm going with this? Yeah, I see exactly what you're talking about. And And one could also say that if somebody took a cut of your video, Talking right. I was going to ask about stitching and, and, and recycling of content because that is an ever present thing nowadays. I know you have the option, especially on YouTube to like, turn. I think they call it remixing where people can yeah. take your short and make a short on the short and you can yeah. turn that off. It's on by default. But yeah, so if if you make a video and show like a page of the player's handbook and then I remix that, is it not transformative at that point? Cause I've transformed ah. your content into my content. Yeah. Um, so if, if, so if I take a, a page of the player's handbook, make content about it and you make content of my content, mm -hmm. you're infringing on my content, which might be infringing on wizards content. So you would be, uh, indirectly infringing on wizards content. Interesting. So that is not by definition transformative. No, interesting wow laws yeah i went to uh, school for a long time and it's yeah. practiced for even longer to figure this shit out and it, no. the best part is it changes every day yeah um, uh so moving on there then we get to the 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 fourth fair use factor which is the part that watsi actually cares about okay Money. the effect <laughs> upon the potential market or value of the work okay so in theory to our point from earlier, if I flip through in 4K and very slowly show off each individual page to the point where you have enough time if you wanted to to screen grab each one, therefore mm -hmm. being able to reproduce the book in its entirety, therefore not purchasing said book, affecting market share. Yeah. Um, this is going to be super important. Okay. Uh, the, the Supreme Court has found that this is a really important factor. Sure. If your use of the work replaces the work in the marketplace, then it doesn't matter if it's it's a educa nonprofit educational. It doesn't matter if it's criticism or commentary. Uh, you are just replacing the work. Gotcha. So if I were to copy and paste the entirety of the text and yeah. put that in a Google Doc or something, that right. would be yeah. replacing said thing. Right, precisely. Um, and so that would be uh, a problem. Now, here's the thing. Once this, you know, PHB or the elements of it that are going into the 5.2 SRD are yes, out there, yep, yep. then that's an express license. And once you have a license, you don't need, need to care about fair use. 
Right. And to that point, right, if, if you don't recall, right, the, the big win from the OGL situation was the entirety of D&D 5e's OGL was dumped into Creative Commons, therefore making it no longer held by Wizards of the Coast as a thing they could control. It is now public, yeah. irrevocable, worldwide, blah, 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 all the words that I don't remember. But anyway, yeah. that. So they have committed to, on multiple occasions, that when the final book in these rules updates, so we have the Player's Handbook now, Dungeon Master's Guide in a couple months, Monster Manual in February of next year. In theory, I'd love to say they're working on it concurrently. We don't know, but they said sometime post the Monster Manual release, they will release what they're calling the SRD 5.2, which will take all of the things that were essentially in the SRD and update them to the 2024 rules. Now, without right. going through that in its entirety, it is the entirety of all of the base classes and a singular subclass. Because those are the things you need to have the understanding of if you want to make your own content utilizing that. Right. So that will likely, not confirmed, likely include the weapon mastery system because that's a base function of several of the base classes and things like that. At which point, what we're talking about here, all of that content will now be essentially available for free to yeah. anybody who wants to use it, which is also interesting to see these stipulations now but then knowing that they're going to go away to a large degree. Now, it's not going to be every spell. We know this. We've seen this. No. Some of them might drop the Watsi uh, IP, right? It might not be. It'll be Magnificent Mansion, not Morden Canaan's Magnificent Mansion, things like right. that. But that's coming in less than like six months. Right. So that was another thing that kind of um, something that was in the back of my mind, the entirety of this conversation is happening. So in theory... Are you not affecting your own market share by releasing the majority of this to the public as a Creative Commons license? Yes, you definitely are. There are okay. going to be people that use the 5.2 SRD instead of buying a book and then supplement it by like you know uh, through like using one-off pages from the you know D&D Beyond or something like that. Sure. Um, now, here's the thing though: that's in six months. Correct. So there's a lot the, to go between there. And there. The bulk of sales are going to be upon release. And now Which to Christmas cool. time, right? Holiday yeah. sales. Exactly. Holiday sales are the key there. So, so okay. what we're looking at here is uh, a massive problem for Watsi in terms of, you know, people uploading it to sites like AnyFlip right. and uh, whatnot. And so, or, you know, uploading entire Dropbox files that are password protected so they're harder to do takedowns on, which you suck if you do that. Um, yeah. <laughs> so... Correct. Correct. Yeah. So, um. Okay, now then this you may not know the answer to this, but let's talk about D&D Beyond. So yeah. it will go into the public officially in regular release. I think it's the 17th of September. Let's just say that that's right. the case. And then I think it's early access on D&D Beyond, say like the 4th of September. Okay. I don't know those dates. That's just I'm picking dates out of the air. But let's say it's on D&D Beyond. Now, another thing again that we'll, we'll kind of circle back to, but we've never had the PDF before. Right, we all the only way to get things digitally is from a virtual tabletop or from D D Beyond. Now D D Beyond does not recreate the text of the book in right. book format. It does recreate the contents of the text by having it available. Now it is broken down into sub folders and things. So if I'm gonna click on it and then click on say like wizard again, it's gonna take me to the wizard section. It's white text or black text, white background, maybe a piece of art or right. whatever, that is not the same as just showing an open piece of the book. Right. And that's available to anybody who has that purchase of, you know, D&D Beyond subscription. I assume, though, that's still going to be beholden to fair use at this point. Yeah, I think it definitely would be. I mean, because copyright still attaches in, in digital and physical formats. Um, so that would be the key. Um, now, the real question that I have that will follow up on that is mm -hmm. we're beholden not that to say that everybody isn't, but we are explicitly beholden to these embargo clarifications because of the creator program sending this out. If you are, Joe, anybody who bought a book at Gen Con, technically you're not, you never signed into anything. You never agreed to any verbal or written contract to do anything with this book. Now, YouTube still has DMCA strikes and the ability to demonetize videos and things like that. But if I just picked up a book at uh, Gen Con, and I decided I want to take pictures of like all of the um, the tables, right, for all of like the base class features. Like, oh, check it out. 
uh, fighter gets this many second wins or whatever. And I post this all in like a Twitter thread or a series of Instagram posts. I didn't sign anything. I didn't agree. But I don't know if this is <laughs> outside of us making this video out in the world for people to know other than like potential common sense and general copyright law. Yeah. So, so Wizards of the Coast uh, and especially the creator team has a vested interest in giving you a heads up about what they're going to be looking at. These rules apply to everybody. All the time. All the time. Forever. Um, Perpetuity, yes. as we say Wizards, in the legal world. Wizards is giving you guidelines because you are a creator that covers wizard stuff and wizards enjoys the relationship they have with you. Mm -hmm. Now, Eaton, they, you know, wizards is one of those companies that, you know, relies on publicity and relies sure. on goodwill public image. and yeah. And public image. So they want you to cover their stuff. Good, bad, or ugly. Cause any news is good news. Correct. Um, except recently, I think they probably disagree with me on that one. Oh yeah, that's fair. Last week. <laughs> yeah. 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 But, yeah. Um, but that is all to say that, you know, if if I were to, as an, you know, Joe Schmo down the street, yep, come out and take photos of the entire PHP and upload to any flip or take photos of, you know, the entire fighter class and upload it one by one to Twitter or et cetera. Um, if I were just creating, starting my content creation career and I don't have any contacts at Wizards, whoever, whatever situation you're in, you're still in the same boat as you. Ted. As, okay. With um, fairy. Okay. And, um, and here's the thing. Um, obviously, you referenced an NDA earlier. Yes. Um, that was attached to a specific work or a sure. specific file that you received. Yes. You didn't sign anything for to get your copy of the PHB, though. You got an email that said, yeah, I'd like to get it. And you said, yeah, I'd like to get it, right? Yeah. So you just got a review copy. Mm. But so, the PDF was part of the, like that, I think was... You know, if we were followed mm -hmm. down the, the, you know, it was that's yeah. sign the NDA that you're going to get this PDF significantly early. And there was a separate email about the physical book. Right. Because there was an option to decline the NDA and not to get the, P, the PDF. PDF, but just get the physical book, which is what a large portion of people did. In fact, a lot of people who went to the WOTC press event at Gen Con just walked out with a free book. Yeah, I got my second one there. Yeah, and that's what I mean. Like you didn't, in theory, if you were invited to that and didn't get that, that would be an option. But what if I'm, again, somebody down the street who picks up this book and is not looking to do a flip through, is not looking yeah. to do page by page posts, but decides they're going to start their content creation journey by maybe doing, you know, something like this and they're going to go and they're going to show and maybe they'll bring it in close to the camera or what have you uh, to talk about different aspects. Like look at right here where it says this but they're not beholden to this. They're still going to be uh, like having this conversation yeah. that we're having, but they're still in effect being affected by fair use in that instance. I I would tell you that what you just described is different behavior than doing a 4k flip through. Okay. Um, what here's, here's where I think Watsy is going with this. Um, sure. And, and what's interesting is I see both sides of this. Um, and you know me. I'm I'm more than happy to hop on here and tell, say, yeah, you know, they're in the wrong. What the hell? Well, trust me, we did it during OGL. Yeah, we did um, a lot of that. We did a lot of that during OGL. And so, but I will say that here, Watsy is trying to basically say, hey, man, make your content. Don't make our stuff your content. Right. Um, if we go down the four fair use factors. Mm -hmm. let's uh, let's talk about a flip through for example sure um for fair use factors the purpose and character of the use it's commercial in nature 100 percent. Right. it's not transformative you're showing the entire thing you are offering criticism and commentary but it weighs more towards uh commercial non-transformative use um two the nature of the copyrighted work it is a published work that is highly you know highly uh imaginative and creative right that weighs against you as well. Sure. The amount and substantiality of the portion used in relation to the copyrighted work as a whole. We actually literally see this in the email that you referenced earlier, where they say, do not publish footage, images, etc. that display an entire chapter of the book end to end. Do not, etc. do the same for the display of the entire book, of the page, book. By page <laughs> or upload a distributed PDF content of any product provided to you. Right. Um, the amount of substantiality on a flip by flip, you're replacing the whole thing. Or replacing significant sections of it. 
Yeah. So yeah. if, again, to my point, if I'm just doing a live stream, taking questions from the chat, you know, yeah. hey, hey, Ted, what's a, what's the deal with this spell? And I'm like, okay, hang on. I flip to it and I read the spell and yeah. I'm reading and I'm like, for real? Like, yeah. and I'm like, hey, look at this. And I put it right up here and I was like, do you see where it says 2d8 per every spell attack or whatever? Yeah. Like to, to accentuate my point, does that put me in a bad spot or is that separate? What you just talked about is commentary. It's criticism. Um, it is not like it's blurry. It's not showing an entire chapter. Um, it is uh, not going to cause people to it's not going to cause people to not buy the book because it replaces their want of it. Mm. It might cause people to not buy the book because you think something's stupid. OK, but, like, uh, but it doesn't replace the book in the marketplace. OK. Um, and so on that, I'd say that that probably falls into fair use. So what I think Watsi's trying to do without expressly telling us is say, hey, make your content about the book. Don't make your content the book. The book about the yeah, yeah, I agree. We we've had conversations about this for sure. So I think that that would be fine. Um, well, then the other question I had, and again, obviously it it is what it is. But like, if I were to do vertical shorts content where I'm half of the video, and I'm zoomed in on a specific sidebar, right? Like mm -hmm. it's like how to use backgrounds or species from old books, and it's just one little aspect of the page, and it's at yeah. the bottom of that. It's not the entire book. It might be clear or as clear as I can get when I zoom in all the way. Yeah, one of those little side sections that's highlighted with different background uh, coloring. Correct. And I'm talking about that and express expressing why I like it, why I don't like it, why I think it's stupid, why I think it's good. Hey, did you know if you're curious about how to figure out how to do this to use this book with older content, this is the sidebar that explains that to you. So you're not out of luck if you're looking for half orc or half elf or whatever. This is how you would do that. You're probably okay. Okay, I mean it's it's a small part of the part of the work. Um, it is uh, it is for criticism and commentary, and it's not going to cause people to not buy the book. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So then I guess to the other side of it, if I don't even show it and I just tell you this book is the worst thing I've ever seen, it is awful. No one should buy this ever, and I don't show the book at all. Am I not? I'm just having a conversation with a talking head on a camera. Yeah. But. I'm not showcasing stuff, but I am potentially also affecting the market. Then there's no but... copyright infringement, so there's nothing for them uh, to do. Okay, interesting. Okay. It only like, it start to get in trouble here once you start showing stuff. So, okay, let me play Vasicious Content Creator. Let's go! I love this game! Welcome, folks. Hi, it's Ted from Nerd Immersion. We're going to start with our 2024 Player's Handbook audiobook, Chapter 1. And I read through the entire book. I don't show a single thing on screen. But I read from page to page, cover to cover, the entire book. Mm. Now, you know, okay, here we are at Wizards. Wizards are arcane casters and blah, blah, blah. At first level, Wizards get a spell book, and this is how you blah, blah. And I, I just read the sidebars. Now, I may be jumping around the page based on where I find the sidebars, but I haven't shown a single thing. But I've, and again, I'm not advocating anybody do this, and sure. I'm not going to yeah, no, do this. Yeah, no, of course not. But, you know, because if this was a literary text, like a novel, and I read this from cover to cover as an audio book without permission from the publisher or the author, I effectively have removed you ever wanting to read that book because it's a story, right? And I'm telling the story and I'm doing that. But if this is a text, a source book, am I removed? Like, are you going to go back and re-listen to what I said and then write it down yourself? Or like, how does, like, you know what I mean? So here's the thing. audiobooks. Are the right to create an audiobook from a from a literary work is a copyright copyrightable thing. Okay. Um, it is one of the rights tied up in copyrights. So if you effectively create an audiobook from the PHB, sure. It is not going without commentary. We're assuming that you're not saying like I'm just I'm just reading it verbatim. That is going to be commercial in nature. Um, it is not going to be transformative in right. any way. It's, it's just, I'm reading for, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's a highly creative work. It is the entire work or a substantial portion of the work. It is or a significant, uh, significant, qualitatively important part. And then, um, uh, finally, if somebody listens to it, it might actually affect the work. Somebody could transcribe it because YouTube has built in transcript transcription. I was going to, that's exactly where I was going with this because transcription tools are a thing that exists in this day and age. Yeah. 
So even if I talk about something, even if I transformative discuss like, all right, let's talk about the wizard. And I read, all right, the spell book. And I read the block of text and I say, okay, this is what it means. Like, here's what I think. I don't like this. I do like that. But somebody transcribed it, whether it's with YouTube's, uh, you know, yeah. uh, closed captions or some other listening device or a screen yeah. reader, right? Who knows, right? right? Uh, Precisely. Uh, and now it exists in a text form. Mm -hmm. I didn't show it. No, but you you did create an opportunity to replace the book. And now here's okay. the thing: a lot of you might be asking, "Well, Noah, is it is the test like if it hits three of the four boxes, or is it right? Like, yeah, uh, it's not. Okay, it's it any is, of them. It is. Eh, this one feels wrong. Oh, so it's subjective. It's subjective. Uh, you know what's great about subjectiveness for Watsi? You have to be in court to prove that you know, to prove your argument and to. So I could make a video defense. and because they, in theory, not, not, this is not true. We're just having a conversation. They like me. Yeah. And they like the way I did my video, even yeah. though it maybe toes the line, but they uh -huh. hate you and you right. do a very similar thing. And they're like, well, fuck no, we're going for him. We but actually in, in the legal field have something we call the fifth fair use element, oh. which is, whether you're a good guy or a bad guy. Interesting. Yeah. So it like, so the content that I made, and I just want to point this out and I'll just explain this here to all of you. I made several videos. We obviously had our back and forth at Gen Con. They gave me the option to blur it. Then they said, maybe don't. Then they said, maybe do. And I just said, well, screw it. I'm just going to delete all of it. And if I have to start it over, I'll start it over. I'm not, I do all my videos in one take. If the video, I flub a line, I just restart the video over again. That's just how I work. So it's not a huge deal for me to start over other than the content that I've already made that I'm in theory losing and the clicks right. that I'm losing because I didn't make videos as soon as those were available. So I'm not doing this with malicious intent. I'm not trying to replace these things. And I feel like I've had that conversation with Wizards of the Coast that, hey, I'm just trying to do my thing. It sucks that this was kind of a moving target or things weren't clear They've been nothing but accommodating, you know, and I just also want to point out because it's probably worth mentioning way later in this video, but they're not paying me to make any of this. So consider no, that, not. too. This is free press for them. I'm just talking about something that I'm passionate about. Yeah. So it is 100 percent. It is not OGL 2.0. It is not any of this. I've seen a lot of shit getting slung around on this, and it's it was unfortunate. And I, I literally brought this up to them that like, hey, I know we're in the process of rebuilding trust from what happened last year, this is not like, this is not a good look to, no. yeah. but th they've worked with us to do everything they can to provide clarity to, you know, and obviously this is probably going to be a thing that applies going forward, as you said, for everybody. So now this is just the landscape that we have. So just consider that. Now, some of you may have mentioned or saw that there was a strike copyright strike. Uh, right. I don't know enough about this, but you kind of have an idea or, or, or some thoughts or like it got removed. That's the ultimate thing, right? This copyright yeah. strike got removed. It is not there. It was Jordan's content. It got he got striked. He followed what the guidance was at the time, which is obviously subsequently changed. Right. He removed that. They removed it within like less than a day. Yeah. Like our bad. And they cut it free. And I believe that happened on a Sunday. Correct. Yes. So um, so here's the, here's a couple of things about that strike. I took a look at it. I got tagged in it a bajillion times. Um, <laughs> uh, and, uh, I took a look at the strike one. It came from Hasbro. Um, the, the email, the attorney associated with that strike is, um, let's put it this way. My only connection with them on LinkedIn is through Hasbro legal, not mm -hmm. through wizards legal. Um, gotcha. And so it didn't. It didn't come from uh, at least professionally. It did not appear to come from uh, Wizards of the Coast team. It came from a Hasbro team, gotcha. um, which is in line with the OGL snafu. Um, right. Uh, and also the fact that the D and D creator team didn't immediately put out a post saying, "Hey, here's we did this or we didn't do this." Between those two things, it leads me to believe that. Papa Hasbro, who has a habit of walking to the China shop and saying some awful stuff about the people in there, mm. um, didn't talk to its uh, Watsy team. Um, and they stepped in it again. Yes, yeah, so this is like a left hand does the Watsy team. 
left hand doesn't know what the right hand's doing kind of a thing. Yeah. No, and that the best part about that is is that like it would not make sense to DMCA the content when we had um back and forth and open dialogue about the guidelines that have been put out. Um I'm well, I wasn't familiar with the content that Jordan put up. I hadn't seen it myself and I still yeah. haven't seen it. So I don't know if it was a flip through. I don't know what it was. Um, yeah, I'm not sure either. Commentary or anything like that. But um the thing is, is that we when you're in that legal gray area of trying to figure out, okay, these are the guidelines, they're shifting, we had an embargo, we're having to figure out what's going on. We have active back and forth communication to DMCA something and threaten a channel indicates to me that it was not Watsy. It was not Watsy, it wasn't the D and D team. Um, yeah, and, and to and to, also yeah. go ahead. No, no, you go ahead. I was gonna say, and also there's an argument to be made that Jordan had a license to that stuff, which, you know, if, if I'd had a chance to talk to Jordan about it, I would have straight up told him like, um, like, Hey, like they told you, you could post this. They said that you were okay. Like, you know, you need to, you can counter this quite frankly. Right. Um, so I, I do think that that strike, which was retracted, um, uh, was made an error and whew, let the dogs out <laughs> yeah so for those of you who don't know how it is on the back end of youtube right they have a three strikes in your out policy if you receive three copyright strikes on any of your content your channel is deleted immediately yeah like like do you have an opportunity to ro you have a, a an appeal i believe yeah there's, there's appeals there's counters and there's copyright school and you can you know, maybe um, delete your videos too if you don't want to mm, deal with the strikes no not necessarily oh um, okay so uh, once, once you're, it's a three strikes and you're out rule. And, um, there's honestly, there's a whole, people have really figured out how to game that system corporations have, mm -hmm. um, to the point where like, I just basically tell clients, Hey, if you get one, talk to your YouTube partner, like yeah. that kind of thing. Um, try and figure stuff out because if you get one, then you are one bad day away from losing your channel. Right. Yeah. In fact, so... uh, we've, we've seen channels go down. It was three back to back strikes in the case of PewDiePie with the whole Firewatch deal back in 2014, 2015. Right. Yeah. So there, there's precedent for that. So you can understand why. Also, knee jerk reaction from everybody involved in the entire YouTube creator space, because that is a terrifying thing as anybody who's yeah, worked right to build a channel so. over time. It is uh, frustrating. Uh, and, and the, you know, the lack of clarification or the perceived clarification and then something like that, that seems to fly directly in the face of that clarification. As I've said before, not a call being made by the D and D creator team, right. but something that they unfortunately had to find themselves embroiled in. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. So I, I think ultimately if we were to kind of start to sum things up, They've done Watsy on the D and D side of things has entered into a program of which they've never done before. Not to yeah. say that that's an excuse because it's not, but this is a new thing right now. Do I imagine the embargoes for any future books that come out will be explicitly spelled out? They should be. Otherwise I don't think anybody's going to sign them or agree to yeah. them. They're going to say, I want this in writing. Please spell it out. Blah, 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 blah send it to my lawyer, whatever the situation is. So I'm abundantly clear what you're telling me. So I know what I'm getting into. There's none of this kind of back and forth at the 11th right. hour to figure this out. Um, but they did work with the creators with an open dialogue to all the creators involved in the process to make sure everybody were doing their best to adjust and alter this. Again, I already see the shill comments coming, but... Obviously, if I was a shill, I wouldn't have deleted six videos. They would have just let me yeah. do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, the videos would have been sponsored, or I wouldn't have to be going through what everybody else is going through in this period of uncertainty because it would have been spelled out in the contract for the money we made for this. Well, and here's the thing. is Typically, when, when I'm dealing with embargoes, so embargoes are are common on on both sides of the industries that I work in. I work, reminder, I work in both video game and tabletop. Mm -hmm. um, I, they're becoming more common in tabletop, but they're like standard in video sure. games and they've figured this shit out. Um, in, in video games, embargoes are spelled down to the letter. And quite frankly, if you're doing VOD based content or static content in general, shorts, whatever it might be, and not a live stream, then there's an approval requirement. Now, here's mm. the thing. The D&D &D creator team is like less than five people. Right. Um, and uh, they don't have the ability to approve all of the content that's going to be made. 
sure. um, from from their partners. And you know, uh, I think that Wizards of the Coast and Hasbro specifically, frankly, shame on Hasbro for not giving that team more resources. Mm. Um, and for also putting them in a shitty position with regards to this and not communicating more clearly. I think that that is, that is a big problem that Hasbro has. And it's, that's the thing it's Hasbro keeps screwing over D and D. Um, and, uh, and I, I am very much in of the mindset that they should have more resources and more, um, and they should not be stretched as thin as they are. Cause that's what leads to these issues. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think that pretty much sums it all up so again the content you may see from your favorite creators going forward may differ from the way it was in the past so in the past again once a video once a book went up for early access on D D beyond i would just go and review say all right let's talk about the new barbarian class and i would go to D D beyond and i would pull it up and i would go through it and it's you know talk about it it would be you know it would be on screen i'd be in the corner mm-hmm. i'd talk about it and go through it and whatever the case may be I don't know if I can technically do that to that degree anymore, given this updated rules that I'm aware of. Now, again, this should apply to everybody, but I'm just given a, kind of a more explicit heads up because of the nature of the creator team. So content may be different. It may be more kind of quick show book things. It may not be full blown. Here is everything. Here is it up on the screen. You know, I, I don't know. Well, if I get additional clarification in any way, I'll let you know, but. I'll tell you what the, what the problem here is that we've got in back to back years chilling effects on the community. Sure, we've had twenty years, twenty two, almost twenty three years where D and D was allowed to flourish and thrive, um, do whatever it wanted, basically. Yeah, do do what we wanted because it was something that, as community, we thought we were kind of owned and kind we of we owned it. Yeah, and it was it was oh hey you know Watsi is the stewards, Watsi is the um, they keep this going, but this is something that was created from the community and put into a corporate structure. And what Hasbro has done in the last two years is brought the hammer down and said, Hey, here's a reminder. We bought this from Gary Gygax. Um, we bought 1999, this from, I believe. Yeah. We bought this from TSR and we're going to do whatever the fuck we want with it because it's in stranger things now. Right. Yeah. Um, and uh, they want to remind us that, no, actually, we don't own D and D, right? And that's a shame because they'd make a lot more money if they stopped trying to beat us over the head with that. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. Right. So this is this is where we're at. If we get additional clarification or adjustments to these rules in the future, presumably this will be a similar thing. We'll see for the Dungeon Master Guide and the Monster Manual. Then we'll have to revisit all of that once the SRD 5.2 comes out and talks about that to some other further degree. Mm-hmm. Um, again, uh, you know, this may, so you can obviously take this opportunity to think about this, right? You're entitled to your own opinions, right? Live your life. You, you, you don't want to pick up these books. You're going to stick with 5e. You're going to go to Pathfinder. You're going to go to Tales of the Valiant, whatever you might want to do. I can't swing you either way, but the goal here was to give you as much information to make an informed decision so that you're not kind of dealing with speculative content one way or the other, you know, somebody blowing up or going off the handle on one thing or another to just kind of level set you for what's going forward. Because honestly, for a lot of this, I wanted to know too. Yeah. That's why I didn't make any content since like last Wednesday, because I was trying to figure out what the landscape is and what I'm allowed to do. We've had a lot of conversations. <laughs> yes, yeah, and it and, and rightfully so for a lot of this because unfortunately not everybody does have a friend who's a lawyer right around the corner that can answer those questions for you. And if you're a small kind content creator that you're so pumped that you just got into the creator program and you got the free book and now you're seeing all this stuff, that might turn you off from making that content entirely or you'll just be to- too yeah. scared to do something because you're worried that you know Big Bad Hasbro is going to come knocking on your door. Yeah. And that's unfortunate because this all this is going to do is hype the book. Any content anybody makes is going to hype this book. It's going to bring people or or or, you know, I mean, people might buy it to just be like, oh, my God, I can't believe they did this. Right. Hate viewing is a thing. Maybe hate reading is a thing, too. And I just don't know it. It is. Um, So just be careful. Right. Uh, If your question is whether or not I should post this. If you have a YouTube creator partner or you're in the D&D creator program, if you're questioning whether or not you should, 
ask, but ultimately I'm going to say, if your question is, should I, the answer is probably no. Yeah. Uh, if you have, if it's that much of a question for you, then you probably already know the answer and you're just hoping for something in the opposite direction. And, and at the end of the day, take a look at the, what you've created and say, is this content about the book or is this content the book? Correct. Yeah. Yeah, so that's really the best we can do. Uh, I know this video is going to run long, and I'm sure not many of you made it to the end, but we wanted to cover this in its entirety. Noah, is there anything else that we missed that we think we should talk about before we bring this video to a close? Uh, no, unless you want me to remind them about Forgotten Paths again. I will. Be, actually, I did just think of something while that yeah. triggered my mind. What about if I'm yeah. live streaming and uh -huh. I'm playing on a virtual tabletop Ooh. that has the book in it yeah. and I'm pulling up the book in the virtual tabletop, which is the book itself to play the game on the virtual, like say they put it in foundry, right? Yeah. And I'm going to yeah, play and I pull up my character class and I'm, I'm the DM and I'm pulling up the player's handbook to scroll through yeah. to give you input as the player. Oh wait, that what's that feature called? I scroll through. Yeah. I'm scrolling through and I'm looking at it in a sanctioned licensed thing that I paid for to have. Right. But now it's on screen and possibly screen capturable. So first of all, clarifying one thing, just because you paid for it doesn't mean you have a right to display it to other people. It means you have a personal right to use it. Correct. Two. Um, look at it. It's the purpose and character of the use. It is not you're not creating content about the book. Right. You're showing the book because you're creating other content and it's relevant to it. Um, two, it's you know, nature of the copyright work is gonna be the same for all of these. It's highly creative, et cetera. Um, the amount used, you're only talking about using a quick portion of it as a referential material. Sure. Um, and, you know, scrolling quickly, that's not going to show stuff in 4K. And the effect of the use upon the market, people still have to buy the book. If anything, you're advertising how easy it is to use. Um, and so it's not like you're going to be showing an entire chapter. Even if you're scrolling quickly, we both know that you can't just pause and go frame by frame on that. So you'd still probably be in good shape. Final question. I'm doing DM prep in my virtual tabletop for a pre-written module that comes out next March, let's say. Cool. And I have the monster manual in my virtual tabletop and I have my module and I'm doing my thing I've been doing for 15 years, my DM prep live stream. Let's build our carrot. Let's build the encounter. Here's the map. Let's put all the monster tokens on here. Ooh, let's see. Wait, what does that monster do? Let me pull it up. I'm looking at the stat block. Oh, yep. That's good for my characters at level 12. Okay. I'll drag and drop that here let's scroll through the adventure okay at this point room four we got to put four monsters i leave it there and i put the monsters on the map something i've been doing unabated for 15 years yeah but now i'm doing it in a post 2024 world what Great happens question. to me um let's take so we're looking specifically let's talk about what you're using there you're talking sure. about using the stat blocks of yep. particular monsters correct Purpose and character of the use, I would say it's commercial, but it's, uh, I would say it's a little transformative because you're not just showing the work for the purpose of showing the work. Right. You're showing it as part of a larger content piece. Mm -hmm. um, it is showing, hey, this is how I'm adapting this into this other thing. I think that could go either way. It's a 50 foot shot. Mm. Let's call that neutral. Nature of the copyrighted work against you 100%. Right. Um, you're going to lose that one. The amount used, you're only showing it like one stat block. Right. Um, but my live stream's three hours. But your live stream's three hours and I'm going stat block. And I'm, do, well, and I'm doing multiple stat blocks, right? Because I'm, right. I'm building out a series of encounters, different maps. I'm doing the thing so that like stuff that people love. I've got hundreds of viewers. I've been doing this for years. I and, would say that the more you use, the further that weighs against you interesting and then the effect of the use upon the market um nobody's not gonna buy the d the the dmg the you know whether or the player's handbook or the monster manual because you showed a couple of stat blocks now okay. if you show the entire stat block every stat block from the monster manual then yeah right. you have a problem sure um but i don't think that's so effect of the use upon the market i think goes in your favor the amount used sliding scale nature's copyright work against you and then the 50 50 on the purpose and character so what i'd say is that you should hire a good lawyer to defend when watsi probably takes that down that's what i was gonna say is there is there a legal precedent from the fact that i've i mean probably not would be my guess that i've been doing this for so many years without any well, issue and then i'm like you're i'm losing revenue now you've been doing it 
but possibly in in flying Under, in the face of copyright. Usually flying in the face of copyright, but the question is, are those same stat blocks, or is any of that also in the SRD that's currently under Creative Commons? Oh, interesting. So if it is, then technically I might be okay. Right. I see. And then I wouldn't have a case to say like, well, your heart, well, I mean, again, that's just probably not the best situation, but I'm like, hey, you're impacting my revenue, Watsi, by taking this down, something you've let me do unabated for 15 years. Yeah. Here's the thing is that um, the, the license that they give you is um, to use that stuff or the implied license um, by not taking it down is still replicable, which so we get right back to that replicable versus mm -hmm. irreplicable argument. Um, and uh, there is also an element of fan content, the fan content policy. Oh, back. To, oh, okay. Going old school yeah. here. Yeah. So we do have to take a look at the fan content policy, which uh, admittedly was updated November 15th, 2017. Yeah. And actually ask Wizards Legal that I'm friends with to update this. Update thing. this. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, this is before the explosion of Twitch and other uh, sorts of content that relies this. Um, you can use the wizard IP, except for the restrictions listed herein, um, to make fan content that you share with the community for free. So you can subsidize with sponsorships, ad revenue, and donations, etc. Okay. Um, so it sounds like it might fall under that. I think that this would probably fall under fan content to a certain extent. Um, yeah, so so here you go. Um, it is not verbatim copying and reposting of Wizards IP. No, it's not. So then, yeah, no, I would, I would. But does would how do does that. that interact with the stuff we just talked about for the past hour? Oh, great question. Um, so here's here's what you got is if you look at the fan content policy, they're kind of also just saying, hey, follow fair use. Oh, uh, okay, got it. So it's not really giving me, it's not giving you extra rights. Right. It's just basically reinforcing this more of the same. So. For example, when you're listening to the Amazing Forgotten Pats podcast, which is does use 5e. And by the right. way, just download it. I don't care if you listen. Just download every episode. It's Links great. in the description. Oh. Go ahead. Anyway. Uh, and, and, <laughs> um, when you're doing that, uh, what we're doing is we're creating fan content. It's not replacing the work. It's not verbatim copying. We're using the elements of the IP based on uh, this policy. So I would say it is fair use, but is also expressly licensed under this. But if we didn't have... Um, the the fan content policy i would say that likely an actual play would fall under fair use mm. okay last one because i just thought of it based on talking about that so last night i ran my loss or my fan delver and below campaign oh, here yeah. on twitch right or on twitch or and it'll be eventually uploaded to youtube now the characters are made in D, &D beyond and i am using D, &D beyond maps which mm. shows a map and tokens and stat blocks and things for that that Watsi has uploaded for free for D&D Beyond subscribers to utilize. Now that map technically is not that's copyrighted work. And I'm showing it on screen as part of the virtual tabletop that they designed. If I pulled up on the screen the encounter builder where I showed everybody's things and the stat blocks and all of that, I realize that we're talking a small like not a probably a substantive part but mm -hmm. I'm using their tools. And I mean, I can't even imagine what this is going to look like when we get into a virtual tabletop from Project Sigil in the future. Ooh, yeah, I'm excited for that. Um, because that's going to be like legal heaven for me. I um, imagine, yeah. Uh, so here, I'd say that still fall, falls under the fan Very, content policy. Okay. Uh, especially since D&D um, &D Beyond expressly endorses Twitch uh, by giving you a Twitch login. You know what I mean? Right, yeah. Um, and uh, the ability to, to validate and authenticate via Twitch is is their way of saying, yeah, Twitch is cool. Okay. Um, I think that falls under fan content policy, and uh, it doesn't necessarily fall under something you'd require uh, to do a fair use analysis for. But let's say for the, you know, the fan content policy doesn't exist and you're doing that. The purpose and character of the use is not to, it's commercial, but it's transformative. You're gotcha. taking that and turning it into a story. I see. Okay. Uh, the nature, obviously, we've talked about that. The amount yeah. used, you're not going to use the Minimal entire amount. thing. Right, we're um, just doing a portion of it. Yeah. Right. Uh, now, the effect of the use upon the market, they might not buy the uh, particular map from D&D Beyond if you show the entire thing without any tokens on it. Right, okay. Well, I'll do Fog but of War anyway, but still, yeah. Yeah, but more than likely, it's not going to affect the market. Gotcha. Okay. If If anything... It'll affect the market in a, oh, hey, we should you know, get this uh, on D&D &D Beyond. So 
ultimately what I'll say is we for real are going to wrap this up. If you have additional questions that we can potentially clarify either myself or Noah, leave them in the comments. Uh, we'll do our best to look at them and answer them. Can't promise we're going to get to all of them. Can't promise we're going to have answers mm -hmm. to those. But the ultimate thing is, yeah, there was a mistake. There was some issues with clarification. The D and D creator team did their absolute best to abide to be right by everybody. Hasbro did an oopsie. Uh, it got cleared up, and we're kind of coming out the other side with more clarity on all rules, as clear as fair use can be, for yeah. everybody making D and D content going forward. So, feel free to pause this video, come back, reference different aspects of it. Again, this is not. He's a lawyer. It's not legal advice, but. Take, do your own research too, right? Hire an independent lawyer to look. Right? Yeah. Maybe they'll give you a better. Maybe you have somebody who's a specializes in fair use for TTRPG content. I doubt there's somebody that specific, but there might be. I know Noah. I know. I know. But my okay. point is, if you're really that worried, don't put yourself in a bad spot. Right. Don't risk that strike. Don't risk that lawsuit. Do what you think is right but be ready to pivot based on feedback that you'll receive. And hopefully we can all weather through this and move on. And, you know, the game that we all love will continue uh, in a positive way. And for once, maybe, just maybe, when you see Watsy trending on Twitter, it'll be a positive thing. And I will also say, to that note... Let's focus. Let's 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 focus on things that Watsi is doing actively wrong when they actively do things wrong. Part of the reason why our response to the OGL was so strong was because we weren't just getting upset at smaller stuff. Mm -hmm. Focus on the big things. All right. All right. Well, thank you all so much for watching. Peace. Hopefully, we don't see you for a while. <laughs>